Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be another pregnancy update. This is going to be for weeks 27 and 28 of my twin pregnancy. If you are interested in hearing how things have been going, I do have some baby buys to show you and stuff, then just keep watching. Hey you guys, so I usually say like, oh, well, this last two weeks hasn't been too eventful or whatever, but this time, Kind of a lot has happened in 27 and 28 weeks, so I'm gonna try to keep this concise, but also fill you in on everything that's been going on. Um, for starters, if you follow us on Instagram or if you saw our latest vlog, we did go on our baby moon to Charleston. It was wonderful, it was hot. I'm not gonna say like I was miserable, cause I wasn't, but I was very, <laughs> it was very hot. And I had to take a lot of breaks and you know obviously Charleston there's so much to see there but it's a lot of walking and I couldn't really do that so we ended up driving around and we ate at a few good restaurants and you know we just relaxed really it was just a time to relax there was no alarm clock going off um, CR did book me a prenatal massage which is the first time in this is my third pregnancy I've never had a prenatal massage and it was really nice I kind of wondered how it was gonna go um, I was obviously too big for the like they have like a little donut you can put your belly in if you're you know maybe like in your first or early second trimester but for us larger gals in our third trimester and pregnant with twins and all that um, they just have you like lay on your side and hug a pillow then they put a pillow between your legs and like another roll pillow down by your feet like I was really comfortable um, and the package he got me included a massage and like a mini facial and then they put like this um, seaweed stuff I'm not sure what it was exactly like on your belly and like rubbed that which at first I thought this might be weird like I've never had somebody like massage my pregnant belly uh, but the baby seemed to like it and it was like she wasn't like pushing hard or anything um, but just like gently like rubbing and stuff and it felt really good so the baby moon was good we did on the last day it was memorial day and we um, went and toured the uss yorktown and i don't think that i really thought that through i knew that cr really wanted to do it so i was just like okay let's go do it and then when we got there i feel like i had like a mini panic attack <laughs> he was standing in line to get tickets and i was looking at like how much walking there was and just thinking I don't know if I can do this like I don't know if I could do this the steep staircases and just so much walking and it was so hot um, so we took a lot of breaks for me to stop and sit down I had a huge bottle of water with me and we did not tour the entire ship we just did a little bit of it so it's just neat it was a neat thing to see and we really enjoyed that especially on Memorial Day and then we drove home that day like as far as symptoms go nothing has really uh, changed drastically one thing I haven't really talked about on here much is the restless leg I have it really bad at night um, really really bad at night and even when I'm sleeping and stuff like CR will say that like I have fallen asleep and he's watching a movie and I'm just like twitch my legs are just like twitching um, so sometimes it makes it really hard to fall asleep even during the day when I'm resting sometimes if I'm laying on my sides or whatever I'll notice it so if you've ever experienced restless leg you know how miserable it can be it really is just ugh, it's so frustrating so that is it's not a new symptom that's been happening but I don't think that I've mentioned it uh, so that's you know kind of still going on and I do again take multiple baths a week soaking in Epsom salt um, trying to because that can kind of help as well you know I it's kind of just one of those things it's a pregnancy symptom there's not a whole lot that I can do about it other than what I am doing so that's going on and then the other thing that I've feel like I've reached the point in pregnancy where everything that gets dropped on the floor goes through an extreme vetting process in my mind before it gets picked up it's like if something falls on the floor my ability to bend over and pick it up easily and quickly is gone so it's like in my head it goes through this quick process of like how uh, is that something that's gonna rot on the floor is it something that's going to hurt one of the kids how necessary is it that I pick it up right now like there's like a whole thing that I go through in my mind when something falls on the floor about how long can it really stay there <laughs> and my kids know like as the girls the big girls Kennedy and Shelby know if they're with me and I drop something they immediately pick it up for me like they don't ask they don't whatever they just immediately pick it up for me um, because they know mom has a really hard time bending over and I especially like have a hard time with anything where I have to bend to my right because baby B is 
tucked up really high up here on my right hand side and so I cannot really fold or bend that way at all. I have a little bit of room still here on the left where there isn't much but some feet um, from baby A. <laughs> so I can bend to the left which is nice because I have to kind of bend to get the car door and pull it in and close it. If it was on the right hand side it would be really hard for me to do that. So yeah I feel like I have reached a point of pregnancy where when something falls on the floor I'm just like I how important are you really like what what are you are you going to rot is there am I they're gonna be ants coming like what's gonna happen if I leave you there for a few hours until someone else can pick you up the other thing is this week especially since we've gotten home I mean I had some swelling in Charleston with walking around and stuff but since we've gotten home I'm noticing that like I wake up in the morning and my hands are swollen my joints hurt as you'll notice I can't even wear my Y'all remember I went and bought that cheap ring from Walmart that I could wear since I couldn't wear my wedding band or my like wedding ring. Um, now that cheap ring is too tight. So I just have given up on wearing any kind of rings or jewelry on my fingers. Definitely like this morning I woke up and I feel like my face and everything is really swollen. Like almost to the point that I feel like maybe my glands are swollen too because it feels really swollen. Um, and I can tell I feel it in my face. I feel it in my lips. I feel it. I almost like I don't know how to explain it unless you your face has ever been swollen but in the way that you talk like I can just feel that I'm swollen so um, yeah and then I have like this weird I call it my humpback it's like this it's like this patch behind my neck right here that I feel like it's just like retaining fluid um, it's on the very back of my neck and it's just like this like hump that just holds fluid I don't know I don't like to wear my hair up because of it um, I typically wear my hair down but this is like day 400 of not washing I don't even know I'm exaggerating it's not day 400 but it's like day four or five hair so I um, so I had to wear it up but I, I don't like wearing it up because of this like hump of fluid that's on the back of my neck anyways I don't know what's going on with that again it's probably all just retained water and swelling same thing with my feet definitely feeling the water retention and the swelling like I said my hands hurt and stuff as far as my doctor's appointment so when I we got back from Charleston a couple days later I had my it's like a big appointment um, it was my glucose test we had a growth ultrasound for the girls and then I had a regular OB appointment so I kind of had three appointments back to back as far as my glucose test went, I told you guys I was doing an alternative and I, the alternative was not fun, but it wasn't, it was better than the nasty, than the drink. And again, everyone's different about the glucose drink. Some people don't mind it at all. Um, and other people can't stand it. They throw it up. It makes them feel sick. Like I'm one of those people that's in the camp where it makes me feel really bad. It's more about how it makes me feel like it's not that much of a drink. It's just more about how it makes me feel after just basically they had me bring in um, a measuring cup measuring spoon and hot water and sugar so I just mixed eight ounces of hot water with four tablespoons of just like regular sugar and uh, mixed it together it dissolved because the water was hot and then drank it so I mean it was just drinking warm really warm sugar water and they gave me the same you know five minutes to drink it in and I did that and um, the last couple sips were a little hard to get down because obviously, you know, even though it, the sugar was mostly dissolved, it's still sugary, more sugary at the bottom of the drink. And you could also add lemon to it. At my clinic, you could also add lemon, which I intended to do. But when my dear sweet husband went to the grocery store that morning, he forgot my lemon. So I didn't have a lemon to take. Um, so it's just was sugar water. I could have had lemon in it too. It, again, it really wasn't that bad. I got it down in like two and a half minutes I didn't want to chug it too fast but then I didn't want to like be pushing all the way to five minutes so um so I drank it in like you know two and a half minutes something like that and then I had to go down to the lab and have my blood drawn for in where we live um there's some required blood work at this stage where they check for like STDs and stuff like that it's a state required thing so I had to go down and do that and then an hour later came back and did the finger prick my I don't know what the thresholds are I think it's like 140 or something like that but my um, level was like a 97 so I was good to go they do it right there immediately they spin your blood they prick your finger they spin your blood they tell you right there the only thing that was not good was that she came back and was like your iron levels are really low 
like, I know, I figured, like, I feel tired and everything. Like, I figured that they were. Um, and she said, especially with two babies in there, they're just sucking all that out of you. So she gave me a list of foods to try to eat um, as well. And I do have some liquid Floridix, I think is what it's called, Floridix, um, in my fridge that you drink every day. It does not taste great. So that's kind of one of those things I have to, like, will myself to do. Um, but yeah, so I gotta try to get my iron levels up. We also had an ultrasound, uh, like I said, a growth ultrasound. And they went in and looked at baby A, which is Ivy, and everything looked great for her. She was weighing about two pounds, four ounces, and she's still, you know, kind of head down, um, booty on the left-hand side, and her feet are up here at the top of my belly. And we actually got a profile picture of her not like 3D, just a profile, which we haven't seen in a long time because her face has always been kind of turned away where they've not been able to do it. But it was funny when she went to get the picture of her face, um, Miss Amelia had her little booty like right here in her face. So it was kind of funny. Like it was like her face and then like a butt right here. Um, but everything looked really good with her. All of her measurements were good. And then they moved on to baby B, which is Amelia. She's flipped back to breech. So she, her head is up here, her butt is kind of off to the side, and then her feet are down low. Um, well, actually, like her head is here, her butt is here, and then her feet are kind of curled up. She was same thing, measuring exactly two pounds, four ounces, which is kind of strange. Both girls have measured the, ex the exact same weight every time they've measured their weight. So I thought that was kind of funny. Like they've never been off by even an ounce, which obviously the measurements can be off, but I'm just saying like they've always been the exact same thing. Um, the only thing that was not great was when she went to listen to baby B, Amelia's heart. She had the thing on there, we were watching her heartbeat, and I noticed it immediately. It was like, her heart would go like, and try to like catch back up. So she had an irregular heartbeat. Um, and so her heartbeat was fluctuating between being really low and then normal and then it was just an irregular heartbeat. So we watched it for a little bit um, to see if it was just a fluke or what. She did some more measurements, some other things on the ultrasound, checked their fluid, all of that was good, came back, looked at her heart again um, and it was still doing the same thing. So, you know, she told me, you know, don't panic or anything yet, just, you know, hang, hang tight like this isn't. Um, structurally, her heart looked good. This was a very basic ultrasound, but they, she saw the things she needed to see as far as the structure of her heart goes. So that was that was good. Um, so then she sent me back over to see my OB. And, you know, my OB came in and she was kind of like, how you doing? And I was like, trying not to panic. <laughs> and she was like, okay, well, don't panic. You know, we talked about a lot of different things. Um, from here, basically, I will go in actually in just today's, I go in in like two days to um, a maternal fetal medicine specialist um, ultrasound place where they will do a more in-depth ultrasound on her heart. And I think as they told me, I think they'll just do that on both girls just to make sure. Um, but obviously we're going for because of baby B, because of Amelia. Um, so they're gonna do a more in-depth ultrasound on her heart to see if they can figure out what's going on. There are lots and lots and lots of reasons that it could be happening. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm trying really hard not to panic. Um, I know lots of people that have said like that the same thing happened to them and it was a non-issue. And when the baby was born, the, you know, heart resolved itself and that kind of thing. So, you know, we're not, we're not in panic mode yet or anything. You know, the doctor was kind of like, with twins, it's difficult, you know, when one baby has an issue because you kind of have to weigh the health of both babies because obviously you can't deliver one and not the other. So, you know, if there is something going on and we do have to deliver early or something, I just, I don't know. I'm not really letting myself go there too much yet. She did also mention that we might end up needing to do a scheduled C-section because um, depending on what's, depending on the reasons and what's going on with her heart, going through the labor process and or an induction process or whatever could be too straining on her heart. So we might have to do a scheduled C-section, you know, for her safety. So a lot of things are kind of like up in the air and obviously I, you know, her safety is my number one concern. So 
whatever we do from here on out is just going to be what's best for her. So I've let, I've, and I already kind of had, but I've definitely like let go of any notions or ideas about how I wanted things to go exactly or whatever. I want her here safely, whatever that means. And I will say that I do have a fetal Doppler um, and I hadn't, I'm not one of those people who uses it all the time. I think I've used it two or three times in this pregnancy to listen for their heart rates. And every other day, like since I found out at the doctor's appointment, I've listened to her heartbeat every other day. Cause I've heard some people say that they went in for an appointment, the heart rate was irregular, and then they went in the next time and it was totally fine. So I have listened at home to her heart rate or to her heartbeat um, every other day. And I just listened to it again this morning and I can still hear it. Um, so like I said, it was really obvious to me on the screen. It wasn't something she had to point out to me. I could tell and I can hear it um, when I listen with the fetal Doppler. So it's still there. Um, I was kind of hoping it would just disappear, but it's not. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So if you are the praying type, we'd love for you to pray for her and you know, for her little heart to be totally fine. Um, good vibes, positive, you know, whatever it is that you do when you want something to happen. Um, if you guys could send up those positive thoughts and prayers and stuff for her. As far as the rest of my doctor's appointment, um, again, just kind of, that kind of took over everything. Um, I think I was up three pounds from my last doctor's appointment two weeks ago, so that's fine. Everything else was good and normal. My blood pressure, which I was kind of surprised. I thought after having that ultrasound that my blood pressure might be a little high, uh, but it wasn't. It was all good. It was fine. So yeah, everything else looked good. Kind of the update for right now on that stuff. I'm gonna show you guys uh, my baby buys for this week. Let's get into the fun, cute baby stuff. Like, let's talk about something fun. So y'all know I've been on the hunt for bows, headbands, and bows for the girls, and I placed an order with this company called Modern Piggy, and I got a pack that has cream and gold, lots of different, like, it's like a leather um, bow. This one's felt, but it's like, gold and just really cute colors and then this one has like a brown leather bow a cream leather bow and just a pink felt bow so these are just very simple like them and the company is modern piggy and after my doctor's appointment last week i went to there's like a little specialty baby boutique right by the doctor's office uptown like i usually don't have to go there i usually go to one that's closer to my house but for that appointment i had to go to the big main office and so um, I went to this little specialty baby store after the appointment just to um, make myself feel better because I was a little bit, a little bit upset after that appointment. <laughs> um, and I picked up, I've been wanting to go there because they have the Aiden and Anai um, bamboo single swaddles, which if you've never felt the Aiden and Anai bamboo, oh my gosh, it already feels like butter. Like it already feels like it's been washed a thousand times. They're amazing. So I got this one that kind of is just this light bluish minty pattern on it. I don't know if you can see that. The light's kind of bright. And then this one is just pink and gray uh, with a little bit of a darker purple in it, just polka dots. Um, but these are so crazy soft. I also picked up one more Wub and Ub because I don't know what is with me in these pacifiers, but this one I thought was so cute. It's a purple hippo. And I just thought it was adorable. Um, so I got one more of those, but I'm not buying any more Wub and Ubs after that. I think we have four. I think we have four or five Wub and Ubs, so not buying any more of those. But I did buy, I've never seen these before, and she had a big jar of them in all these different sizes. They're called Jolly Pops, and it's the same like nipple style and everything as the Wub and Ubs, um, but they have the little cutout at the top where um, to go under their nose, whereas like the Wub and Ubs are just that circle. This is cut out and um, then it has a little thing right here. So I need to find, I wanna find some cute passy clips for these. So I need to, I know there's like tons of Instagram shops and stuff I need to look at. But these are called Jolly Pops and I got two of the newborn size, which looks like this and it's pink. Uh, super, super cute. So I got two of the newborn size and then I decided to, just in case, go ahead and get two of the preemie sized ones which are this kind of green color. But again, they have like the little cutout under their nose and a really, I don't know if you can see that at all, probably not, a really tiny little, um, uh, well, it's not a nipple, but whatever it is, the little part that they suck on, that part is really tiny. Even my husband was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. <laughs> so I got two of the preemie ones just in case they're really small, their mouths are really small, whatever, and we decide we want to use those. 
And then my sister and I did a little um, shopping this weekend. I wanted to, with everything go, you know, going on and, and what I've read from some of the twin books and stuff, that it really is good to have your hospital bag packed. We've talked about that. I'm working on getting everything together for my hospital bag. Again, the baby stuff is not so important because if they were to be born anytime soon, they wouldn't be coming home with me. So I'm just more worried about getting the things that I need. So I grabbed a box of disposable nursing pads. These are the Target brand. They're supposedly exactly like the Lancino ones, which are what I used with Kennedy and Shelby when I was nursing them. I also grabbed a pack of the Lancino Soothies gel pads. Really liked these, so I decided to get a two or a pack of these. Again, they're just really soft and they help. I always have a little bit of uh, nipple soreness when I first start breastfeeding. I know people say like, if it hurts, you're doing it wrong, but there's like a process that your nipples have to go through to get used to nursing and those will help with soothing that kind of pain. I do plan to pump and bottle feed them some, maybe not right away, I don't know. Again, that all is just gonna depend on when they're born, that kind of thing. But one of the bottles I wanted to try, so I got a two pack of, it was the Komotomo bottles. Um, I'm like a little kid with these things when I hold them and I feel them and they're like squishy and squeezy. I'm, I'm like a little kid, I just wanna play with them. Also got two things of, one for me to have for right now and one for me to put in the baby's hospital bag, diaper bag, all that stuff. Just hand sanitizer spray. This is the Honest Company one. It's my favorite one, the orange one. I absolutely love it. And then I do plan to rent the hospital grade breast pump this time instead of uh, buying one. I had a lot of trouble with pumping when I had Kennedy and Shelby. I could never really get anything out when I pumped. They nursed fine and grew and did great. But when I pumped, I never really got anything. And I did a lot better when I rented the hospital grade pump. I decided to just go ahead and rent that hospital grade pump again instead of buying um, a, you know, one from the store. That place, that little boutique that I was telling you about that I went to, they rent pumps. That's where I got it from last time. So I will be renting from them again, but I did go ahead and buy this um, Medela breast milk feeding set. And this just has the little tiny, um, let's see if I can get it at an angle. This just has the little tiny storage bottles and a couple of Medela bottles and storage bags in it. I did buy one more extra box of the breast milk storage bags. These are the kind that you can hook up to your pump and pump directly into the bag. But a couple packs of little hangers for their room because we're starting to work on their room. The other type of bottle that I bought a little three pack of was the Tommy Tippy. These are what I used for Jonah. Um, he was on formula. I used these Tommy Tippies and I absolutely loved them. So I got a pack of these. So I have some Como Tomos and the Tommy Tippies and we'll see if the girls like either one of these. Obviously I also have a couple of the Medela ones. So I bought some of this because my sister was like insistent. She said it was amazing. She uses it and she loves it. It's the Baby Gannics. Um, I got the lotion, but it's all in the chamomile verbena scent, and it does smell really nice. So I wanted to try something with a different scent. Pretty much all the baby stuff we have is a lavender scent. And I just wanted to try something different. So I got the um, shampoo and body wash, the foaming one, and then the lotion. Again, these are both in the chamomile verbena scent. Did buy a few other things, but they are more of like baby gear things, and I'm going to do a whole separate video that where I'm gonna show like our baby gear that we've chosen, car seats, sleepers, um, swing, like all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna do a whole separate baby gear video. But that's all the little like fun stuff that I got. And then two more things to show you. My friend Stephanie, I saw her at our girls dance class this last week and she gave me this and it's so cute. It's just a little two pack um, of these little Oh, I hate that this is so bright. I'm hoping you guys can see this. It's just this cute little two pack of newborn um, little rompers. It's like a little light blue one and a pink one. They're just super cute. So, so cute. Very like shabby chic. Guys, brace yourselves. I went to the P.O. Box this week and had a package from a very sweet subscriber and I don't know if she wants me to say her name or who she is, so I'm not going to just because I don't, I, I don't want to do that without permission. Um, but this, you guys, I was giddy in the car. You can ask my children. When I was opening this package, I was like losing it. I was so excited. First thing is she sent two pairs of these little like bloomer shorts and they have llamas on them. 
little white uh, llamas with little pink and blue um, like saddle looking things on their back. Adorable, adorable little llama shorties. I cannot wait to see the girls in these with just like a little onesie and a headband. Oh my gosh. And then she sent each of them one of these. Uh, I'm assuming these are handmade by her. Uh, these little like llama pillow stuffed animal type things that will just sit in their cribs or in their room. I haven't decided exactly like where in their room I'm going to put them. But they're each a little different. You guys, is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh my gosh, let me show you the other one. Oh, it's the it's mini goddesses. And again, I'm not 100% sure if this is if this is made by her or if she bought these. I feel like this is made by her. Um, so if I can find her shop and information and I will leave that all linked below, but look at these mini goddesses. Look at these little llamas. <sighs> Couldn't you just die? I could. Thank you so, so much. Like it really did make me nearly cry. Like the thoughtfulness of stuff, you know, it's just, just love y'all. I'm feeling very like lovey dovey and I love y'all and I love these llamas. That's everything for this week or for the last two weeks. That's all that's kind of going on there. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I'll have another update probably in two weeks, unless something crazy happens and I decide to update a week from now, but probably two weeks um, for the next update. And just thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. We are nearing the end. I am in my third trimester. Like we're be bopping along. I don't, hopefully you guys can see. It's like hard to tell in with this like kimono thing. I tried to bend over so you can see, so that's, I'm kind of like hunched over, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely growing. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye.